Hello students, welcome to the class of pharmacology. So today we are going to start with unit 3 that is organization and function of autonomic nervous system. On the left hand side you can see a picture that I have taken from a source which is being provided later on. So it depicts the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. With the help of this picture, I can show you that how the autonomic nervous system is broadly classified into two major types that is sympathetic and parasympathetic. An autonomic nervous system is a part of peripheral nervous system which controls the various visceral organs. So this is a brief introduction I can tell you about this autonomic nervous system. For further detailed description, let's move on to the next slides. So let's quickly look into the content. So its contents comprises of the introduction, structural and organization of nervous system, organization and function of ANS, differentiation between the somatic and autonomic nervous system, a comparison based on the picture of autonomic and somatic nervous system then somatic nerve autonomic nervous system as a whole and effect of anus on body and other organs so the last point basically depicts the function of anus on body and organs so in this introduction let me tell you that it is a part of pns that is the peripheral nervous system that generally controls the various body activities that are not under the conscious control so this is a highlighting point that is it is not under the conscious control next is the responsible for the control of involuntary or visceral bodily function so let's detail about the functions of the anus that is it works on the cardiovascular system respiratory system digestive system urinary system reproductive and role of in the body responses to stress now let's see what is the organization and structure of anus broadly divided into two types that is sympathetic that is fight and flight and parasympathetic that is rest and digest. Now here this is a broad classification or you can say this is a hierarchy chart of nervous system. What you can see that nervous system is broadly classified into sensory and motor and the sensory is further divided into somatic and visceral what is sensory it transmits the information from peripheral organs to cns and here the somatic receives the sensory information from skins muscle joints and visceral receives the sensory information from viscera while the motor it transmits information from CNS to rest of the body parts and somatic voluntary nervous system innovates the skeletal muscle and for autonomic that is our main point of concern that is involuntary nervous system innovates cardiac muscle smooth muscle. So let me highlight this one. This is the main point of study for us that is the autonomic which innervates the muscles and it is involuntary nervous system. So next is the organization and function of anus. For this the organization and function of anus is not under the consciousness and controls the visceral organ and below here you can see this is the autonomic nervous system especially the parasympathetic diagram has been depicted that is from a preganglionic neuron to postganglionic and the effector organ that is mainly the smooth muscles cardiac muscle and glands and the craniosacral which is near the effector organ so this is a parasympathetic autonomic nervous system has been depicted this is the differentiation between the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system so the differentiation is done on the basis of organ supply distal most synapse nerve fibers peripheral plexus formation primary efferent transmitter effect of nerve section on organ supply so first it is present in all organs this is only specific to skeletal muscle this is present autonomic nervous system outside cns this is within cns this is preganglion myelinated postganglion non-myelinated this is myelinated 
Peripheral plexus formation is present, absent. Main neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, non-adrenaline. This is only acetylcholine. And the effect on nerve section, that is the activity is maintained. No presence of atrophy. And here you can see paralysis and atrophy. So this is a broad way where there is a nicely differentiation done between the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. So now this is previously we had studied the differences on a theoretical basis and this is a practical depiction of a picture that I have taken from a source is being depicted. See in this somatic nervous system myelinated heavily myelinated axon, acetylcholine, skeletal muscle and stimulatory. Whatever points I have included in the previous slide you can see it here. An autonomic nervous system see sympathetic, parasympathetic then lightly myelinated then ganglion then acetylcholine is present. Here acetylcholine is present. Here epinephrine non-epinephrine is present, norepinephrine, acetylcholine that is non-adrenaline is present and this is the smooth muscle it is present and it is stimulatory or inhibitory depending on the neurotransmitter and receptors and effector organs. So previous was a theoretical differentiation and with the help of this picture that I obtained from a source is a comparison of autonomic and somatic motor system. So with the help of this diagram even you can remember what are the differentiating factors of somatic and autonomic motor systems. So here again we are coming with a diagram where we are differentiating between the sympathetic and parasympathetic as the ANS is broadly divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. This picture which is present on our left hand side is obtained from this source with this reference is given. So here you can see that sympathetic what it is showing that is it dilates the people here the people constriction occurs. It inhibits the salivation. Here the stimulates the salivation. Here the bronchial dilation. Here bronchial constriction inhibits the digestion. Stimulates digestion. Stimulates glucose release. You can see here stimulates the gallbladder and here norepinephrine that is relaxation of the bladder contracts the rectum relaxes the rectum orgasm ejaculation is occurring and here vaginal lubrication or erection is occurring and this is a peripheral vasoconstriction is done and this is peripheral vasodilation so this way the sympathetic autonomic nervous system can be differentiated with the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system based on the various organs in our body that is a visceral organs in our body and with the help of this diagram you can even write the various functions of the autonomic nervous system based on sympathetic and parasympathetic. So here there is a theoretical differentiation that is done between sympathetic action and parasympathetic. You, here you can see a pupil and the ciliary muscle. What happens? It dilates and dilates in case of sympathetic action, constricts in case of parasympathetic action. Ciliary muscle does the opposite that is relaxes in sympathetic and contracts in parasympathetic. So these points you have to remember because what is the action happening on sympathetic and parasympathetic? This you can't make it a without remembering you can't remember it. So you have to memorize it and you have to get it inside your brain. Next is the glands that is a lacrimal and nasopharyngeal that is reduces the secretion and it increased the secretion in case of parasympathetic. Salivary glands on sympathetic action causes vasoconstriction and parasympathetic causes increased secretion. Heart, the heart rate and the muscle contraction increased. Heart rate and muscle contraction is decreased. Lungs, the bronchial muscles dilates and constricts in case of parasympathetic. Bronchial arteries constricts in case of sympathetic and dilates in case of parasympathetic the git that is the gastrointestinal muscles muscles in glands it decreases peristalsis and this one increases the peristalsis next is the muscle in the splinters that is contracts and relaxes glands that is reduces the secretion increases the secretion and here in the kidney that is it decreases the urine secretion it increases the urine secretion in the next slide you will see that is a urinary bladder. The bladder wall relaxes in sympathetic while contracts in parasympathetic and splinter it causes contracts in sympathetic and relaxes in parasympathetic. 
So here is the references of the images that I have taken from the source. The reference has been provided. So thank you students for listening to the presentation. Hope this presentation will clear your ideas about the organization and function of the autonomic nervous system. This was the brief introduction slide that is provided for the module of this autonomic nervous system. And if you have any doubts and queries, you can raise questions regarding that. And I hope this assignment will be easily solved by you with the help of this presentation. Thank you once again.